Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl, and I am outside of a new antique mall called the Cool Stuff Gang. I've been hearing all kinds of wonderful things about them around town, and I've always wanted to check them out. So what a better day than a rainy, cold afternoon. 50 degrees for Jacksonville, quite rare. Can't wait to take you inside this old warehouse and show you around. Let's go. The minute you walk in this old warehouse, you are greeted by some of the most incredible advertising and vintage eye candy. Lots of Tabacchiana, uh, Petroliana, and all kinds of cool pieces. I almost bought that golf can for $24, but it wasn't an oil can. Now, these typewriter ribbon tins were fabulous at only $8 a piece, and you don't see ones with the airplanes very often. Of course, I also love that Kiwi tin for our Nate in New Zealand. And all these old cameras are always so fascinating to me. They're an area that I'd love to learn more about. And a great price for that scale at $30. Now, speaking of great prices, some of these old store displays can become quite pricey. And I thought that Timex display was an excellent deal at $30. Now, it's probably from the 70s or 80s, just judging by the graphics, but super cool. And check out that Admiral 1950s TV. Man, the wood finish on that was a beaut. Man, oh man, was this place really stellar. Now, this store had an amazing collection of vintage, and I thought this display was incredibly clever. They had all these little bins of things for a dollar, and check out these matchbooks. What a great collection of cool graphics and advertisements. I love the lightning bolts on that Holiday Inn one. This was at a time when companies and hotels would give away matchbooks because people smoked, and it was a great way to advertise their product. Look at the train there. A lot of people collect matchbooks, and and while these don't bring high dollar, they do have some collectability and cross collectability. Oh my gosh, who remembers Light Bright? I had one as a kid. They were so much fun. I was instantly transported back to my childhood with all of these vintage toys they had for sale. And look at this container. Now, this is dry clean dog hair shampoo priced at about $30. That is a great price for something like that that you don't see every day. And I had to leave it behind because it's not great for a sale. But, of course, for your own advertising collection, I would definitely pick that up. Now, check out these children's books. They had a ton of these. I believe they were copyrighted 1970. And I just thought the graphics were really cool. I didn't pick them up because I wasn't quite sure if they would do well in a sale or not. But they were fun to see. And they had tons of these old milk jars. I love those. The graphics are awesome. Now, I love old bottles. I actually have a collection of antique medicine bottles myself, and I always find a display like this incredibly fascinating. I pick up the bottles on the bottom to see who manufactured them because sometimes you can tell. Anchor Hawking made bottles, Owens, Illinois made bottles. There's different markings on the bottom. Sometimes it's just a number, which I believe is like a mold mark, so in those cases you can't tell. But they had a great little selection of bottles here. I believe these were priced at around $6 a piece, which was incredibly reasonable. This bottle here had a cool paper label, which you don't often find them with their original paper label. So I always like seeing that. And of course, I spotted the ink bottles. I just have a thing for these. I don't know what it is, but they're so incredibly awesome. Now, this was a coffee container, which had some great graphics on it. Now, admittedly, I don't know a lot about comic books. I wish I did. I know depending on the uh, condition and the issue and the rarity, there can be some value. Uh, but I just didn't know enough to pick any of these up. Now, these were $3 a piece, and I think they would make some great wall art. Oh, Patrick, we've got coasters. Of course, I had to stop and look at the coasters. You've got to save your furniture. And these had some great graphics. I don't think these were particularly vintage vintage, like 1940s or 50s, but they were cool. And look at the little dogs. They had some amazing dog items. This is probably a Royal Copley planter. I'm just judging by the glaze and the lines on the bottom. He was really cute. A little too high for a sale, but I just loved seeing him. And they had tons of these green stamp books. 
I didn't get these, although I might go back and pick them up because they would be fun for an advertising sale. And they make some great uh, wall art, too. You can frame your old advertising, guys. It makes a really cool display. Now, this was a Doberman, and I believe he's some sort of a decanter. He's not, I don't think he's cologne. Maybe. I don't know what would have originally been sold in him, but I enjoyed seeing him. He was a little bit too high for me to pick up, but I loved the uh, glaze on that. Now, these were some cool playing cards, and I always stopped to look at playing cards, and yes, some of these did have the salutone finish that we're all looking for. That's a superior uh, method for playing cards, and I love the little velvet boxes, but they were a little bit rough. Now, this guy was great. He's a sun rubber baby, a little creepy i'm sorry for all the people that love the babies i find them a tad creepy but he was cool and thumbs up for trunk down look at this japan trunk down elephant planter man i almost got him and i might go back because he is fun and then you had these japan salt and pepper shakers the little like onion children i think is what they are oh just cool and look at this oliver typewriter okay guys i was totally nerding out here oliver was founded by thomas oliver a minister who actually was frustrated by the blind typewriters from back in the day where you really couldn't see what you were typing and so he invented this u-shaped bar and the design became really popular and the company opened a large facility in 1896 in woodstock illinois Love the Oliver typewriters. And look at all of these little things they had. There was so much eye candy to see pretty much everywhere you look. The shelves were chock full, and it was fun. Oh, look at this little Kodak flash. Love that. And then you've got the, some of those early 1940s shakers. Great books. This place had tons of books and coffee canisters. I mean, the vintage really was endless. I loved this place and could have spent hours here. Now, here's another one of these amazing bowls. All these keys were two for a dollar. Oh, my gosh. If I had more time, I would have gone through every single one because I have an old 1940s Ilco key display, and some of these would have been really fantastic on that. They had old car keys. They had lockbox keys, um, different office keys. I mean, really a variety of different little tiny keys that probably went to luggage or diaries or something. I just had so much fun going through here, and it's definitely something that I will go back and take a much closer look at when I have more time. I came in right as they were closing, so I didn't have as much time to shop as I would have liked. Oh, I love these old clocks. I always look at them because people really do like adding these to their collection. And this tea canister was really interesting. I know Patrick collects them at Trusty Huckster Mercantile, so he might be able to tell us a little bit more about that in the comments. I thought that was really interesting. And they had tons of old photographs, cabinet cards, tin types. That is a, just a great piece of instant family. Now look at all of these baby cards. These were so cool. The graphics on these old cards are really fantastic. I always look at them because I know people like to collect them, display them, do junk journaling with them. And there were some really unique and amazing pieces in here. Now, these were all filled out. Now, I wouldn't be vintage and vinyl if I didn't stop to look at the records. And they had some pretty amazing records in these bins here. They had 33s, 45s, 78s, and even a huge display of tape cassettes, which I didn't get to show in this video. Now, I almost bought this jazz record for Blake, but I wasn't sure if it's something he had or not. So, Blake, if you're watching this, uh, let me know and I can go back and pick it up they really did a great job organizing all the vinyl it wasn't overcrowded it wasn't stacked and piled incorrectly look at the pointer sisters and dean martin here oh man you can't beat that i almost got those two but i did end up leaving them behind i gotta be selective because my vinyl collection's growing and i have quite a bit of it now now i was so impressed with the selection because all of them were in really nice condition and it was very easy to flip through as I said they did a great job organizing this section now they had the platters here now this is a compilation album of some of their best hits so I didn't pick that up because I have all of the original presses already in my collection 
Now, check out some of these titles. Look at Christmas with the Chipmunks. That is an original press on Liberty. It's volume two. I'm sorry if this offends anyone, but I find the Chipmunks a bit abrasive. I have another one of their records. It's more kind of a novelty thing, and it's on red vinyl. It's fun to have in my collection, but not something I listen to a whole lot because I'm just not a fan. Now, they did have Queen, A Night at the Opera, which you'll see here in just a minute. And as I'm watching the replay, I'm like, Katie, why did you pass that by? Yeah, there it is. Oh, man, I left it in the bins. I don't know anything about the Dixie Hummingbirds. I might have to look that up later. And look at Cool and the Gang. Lots of those records. Aaron Copeland. They had just tons of big band stuff as well. These bins were really fantastic, and I could have spent all day here. Like I said, they were closing, so I just didn't have the time. Oh, look at that Rogers Williams album. And the Ventures, oh, tons of Ventures records. Lots of good stuff. Oh, the Ink Spots. I'm a huge Ink Spots fan. I have a lot of their records already, and I do believe I have that. So I ended up leaving it behind. Jerry Vale, Rock and Roll, Red Shoes, Don Lynn. Look at all the stuff in the bins here. I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching me flip through this and going, oh, Katie, you're leaving some good stuff behind. But you know, I'm big into the 50s and 60s, so I'm probably missing some stuff. Oh, look at the four tops. Love the four tops. Oh, I hope they get a chance to come here and I can see them on tour. Oh, now here we are bringing back the brooch. Man, this was a fun little booth. They had all kinds of vintage clothing and purses. And I love the way they display these brooches on this rotating rack. I thought that was very, very clever. And of course, they pin them to old playing cards. So guys, if you have old playing cards that are not part of a complete set, pin your brooches to them in your antique stores. What a great way to display them. Now, I almost got this brooch, but I didn't because it wasn't prong set. But man, it was a stunner, and they had tons of them for about $10 a piece. Lots of cool displays here in this store. I mean, look at all of the old hats and vintage clothing. Now, they had a bunch of shoes, which I really don't know a whole lot about, or purses. But if you collect vintage purses, man, this was the spot to pick them up. I know Karina at Tarnished Treasures likes to hang them on a wall, and they do look really incredible in a display. And some of the beadwork and metalwork on them were really spectacular. Now, this booth was just chocked full of so much eye candy and lots of cool vintage clothing, which admittedly, again, I don't know much about, but it was awesome to see. Now, look at this old time stamper. Oh, I thought this was fantastic. I think it was about $30, which was a great price. They had an old radio, tons and tons of books, and lots of cool graphics. Now, this railroad book was from the 1970s, and I almost picked it up, but I didn't. I just don't know what the market is for 1970s old children's books, but some of the graphics in there were pretty cool. So let me know if I should go back and pick that up in the comments down below. Well, that's the end of our shopping trip today, folks, but here's a little haul for you. I did pick up this amazing 1940s, 50s cabinet. The gentleman bought it from an old auto parts store that was closing down, and yes, that would have originally held auto parts. Now, this is a cabinet that was a store display for the E. Edelman and Company. They opened in 1909 in Chicago, and the company's founder is E. Rich Edelman, who started a wholesale business selling air valves, air cocks, steam gauges, and related products to area plumbing and heating contractors, and of course went on to then sell automobile parts, and this is a pretty spectacular display. It's got that maroon metal with the uh, yellow color that I just love, and some really fantastic little miniature plastic drawers. Now, I do believe that there are some drawers missing on the top, but that doesn't bother me at all because now I can display more of my advertising collection in that open space, and it is just such a cool display and a great price at $40. I can't believe it. I am just thrilled to have it. Great piece of history and a really amazing display. Man, oh man, I gotta say that place is super cool. There's all kinds of amazing vinyl 
and some other great items for sale. They've got a mix of vintage and modern, and there is just something for everyone. I bought two things, a record, which I showcased over on Instagram, and a cabinet, which I will insert a picture of here. They had some great selection of vintage vinyl, as well as some amazing advertising. So I can't wait to go back. They're always getting new stuff in. The gentleman is really nice. So if you're ever in the Jacksonville area, make sure you go check out the Cool Stuff Gang. It's right around the corner from Eco Relics. So you can hit up those two fabulous places here in town. And of course, before my next video, I'll be seeing you over on Instagram at vintage underscore and underscore vinyl. And I hope as always that you will stay in, stay safe, and then you too. Bye-bye now.